to welcome on our next guest. We've got Idu Menendez from Société des Arts Technologiques, <laughs> which is based here in Montreal. And welcome, Idu. Hey, thank you for having me here. So I'm Edu Menezes, as you said. I work at a Society for Arts and Technology, or Société des Arts et Technologies, uh, here in Montreal. I'm a researcher director here. We have, uh, a, let me just start sharing and uh, we, can, we can deep dive. So you will probably see yourselves for a second. And now we can present. So uh, at SAT, we, uh, we do uh, pretty much research and uh, we support arts and technological uh, advancements for arts. And uh, as, we, as I said, we are here in Montreal and we work uh, mostly with open source initiatives. So we try to push our development, our development to be open source as much as we can. And uh, we are happy that we participated last year uh, in the open, actually, but this year, eh? the Open Hardware Summit uh, here in Montreal. And uh, I'm happy to be here again. So just a quick quick words on SAT before we dive deep into two projects that I selected uh, regarding open hardware here at SAT. So we have a lot of things going on here. Uh, we have, uh, we are a creation center. We have a dome for immersive audio and video. We have a, a event space. We do training here for artists mostly in technology. And we have an innovation center. I work specifically on the innovation center and uh, we develop new technologies for artists. Uh, our mission is really uh, to do sustainable digital creation or to support sustainable digital creation. Uh, those are the expertise. I will not uh, go through it. It's very quickly on the screen. And these are the uh, research axes that we do here. So we mostly do uh, co-creation. So we try to uh, bring people uh, in different spaces, in different venues or uh, our, across the world to create together using the internet or using any types and any means of connections. We do collective interactions. So it's pretty much, uh, we try to use technology to put people together and make them experience things together. And uh, we do uh, immersion, uh, intersensorial immersion, which is uh, pretty much tools or sensors, using sensors, using methods, uh, to uh, to uh, trigger several senses in artistic experiences. This all around uh, the collective artistic experience. Uh, though we have a tool set of uh, mostly open source tools. Uh, most of those there are uh, software tools, either uh, developed here or maintain or we help maintain. So open source initiatives, mostly software, but we have a couple of hardware there. And uh, let's, deep, let's dive into one of them. So the first one that I would like to show today is uh, the audio dice. So the audio dice is a, a speaker system. We have five. Uh, they, they work in a, a group of five. So five speaker sets with 12 speakers each that we can deploy uh, to create a specialized sound specialization systems pretty much. And uh, they are they, the idea is that they are uh, flexible enough to be in spaces where uh, we don't have a set of speakers there. We don't have a, a predefined environment or that we can explore architecture to do sound specialization. This is a, an open source project. This version uh, is a more robust one, but uh, we do have uh, the, our prototype here and the prototype is fully open source. This one uh, is also open source, but uh, the details are not available on the web. But uh, for the prototype, We'll give you a moment to work out some Wi-Fi situations. Mm -hmm. The internet is a mysterious place and I never quite know whether or not it's going to work. 
Yeah, it's hard to say. Oh, oh, they're back. All right. They're back. Yay. Oh, sorry. What did, oh, what no. did, what did you miss? Uh, Maybe the last like 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, this is this is really not as exciting as the next one. So I would just uh, point out on the use cases that we have here. Sorry if my internet is dropping a bit. Uh, what, um, what we do, what we did in this use case is that uh, we recorded an orchestra. In a, at Maison Symphonique, so a room, a room a concert hall that we have here in Montreal. And um, we use the dome. So in, the, in this dome, we have uh, 96 speakers and the full 360 uh, visual system. And uh, we, we put the audio dice in the middle. Uh, the cool thing is that once we, we uh, specialize the orchestra, we could navigate around the orchestra and we have this experience of, uh, of uh, well, hearing the orchestra inside the orchestra pretty much and we could navigate to the room as well so there's a 3d version of uh, a 3d rendered version of the room uh, this is one of the use cases of the audio dice i think there is a nice uh, video that shows better and explains better than me speaking let's hope it plays well I hope the sound is going well, trim through well. Actually, the sound is, we can't hear the sound at all. Oh no, we can't hear the oh, sound at all. We can see all. the video. We can see the That's video. That's so sad. And it is conveying the concept. Oh, we got the gear. And this is more, well, there's sound playing, uh, if you believe me. But uh, let's just, let me just try to stop this screen sharing and check on my, on my routing if we can have some, because that would be, that would be more fun. Hmm. So I guess you're you're hearing now. Uh, we can hear you, but we can't hear. You can't hear the sound. Well, no, we can hear I guess you have to. We have to concentrate on on my voice. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, let me just share again. I think I needed Google Chrome too to do that, I'm using Firefox. Okay. So we can move on and I can maybe share later the videos or the links if if we have the time. And maybe show the space, which is probably more fun. Let me see if I can just pass by. Uh, I will then keep on talking and show the other examples. So we did an installation with the new audio dice uh, with an opera. So that, the cool thing is that we can move around the audio dice and we can reproduce uh, via mixing the position of the of the of the singer. So we could have the experience of 
walking around the singer as he sings in a particular direction. So the second project that I would like to show is the haptic floor. And uh, the idea behind the haptic floor is pretty self-explanatory by the name. So it's a haptic floor. It's a movable floor or a vibration floor. The different thing about this one is that uh, it's, uh, it, apart from just vibrating, which most uh, haptic floors do, this one uh, can actually move in space. There's, there's uh, about five centimeters of lenience of movement uh, per axis, so you can really create movement in the floor on the floor, it's not just vibrating on top of vibrating them. And uh, the idea is that uh, we can really explore haptics when we are doing immersion immersive systems. The main idea was to put this on the dome that we have up there, but it's crazy expensive. So uh, we we narrowed down, we, we shrink down a bit the project, and we have a second prototype that's fairly big. Uh, it can hold six, seven people, but definitely cannot fill the dome at the same time. Uh, we do have a partnership for building this one. This use very specific motors. So there is some uh, part of the technology for this particular prototype that's not open source, but the first or in second prototypes, again, fully open source. Those are the actuators that are not open source for this particular version, unfortunately but everything else, including the software, is open source. This is more or less the visualization on how we control each node. So for each node, we can uh, use sound or data to move uh, to move up and down or to vibrate. So we, can just, we can pretty much play sounds with the floor. It's very, very unfortunate that uh, the, the sound is not coming, but I will play a little bit of the video so we can have an idea of how this uh, behaves in real life. So this is the other prototype. And this is more or less how it goes. Uh, we did, we had two artists uh, to actually Two groups of artists, so these uh, these uh, dancers, uh, dancer uh, organization or society, and uh, we had a multimedia artist that explored uh, how can we use use the floor to make art or to make uh, immersive experiences. He will explain how those are the dancers. I will just move forward because well, no sound. And uh, the second one was Michal, that uh, he made a game. So you could uh, use also computer vision to move people around. Uh, so people could move around and uh, play with some ball in the screen and have the haptic feedback of the ball moving. I hope we can find a scene without having to pass through all this no sound, uh, no sound video there. Again, I'm sorry for that. He's explaining that you lean forward and backward to control a virtual environment with a ball that you can see on the screen there. And uh, it moves according to your position. So this is actually made by computer vision, but the haptic response is on the floor. So that's the uh, presentation part. Then uh, as far as I understood correct, if I understood correctly, uh, the idea is also to show a little bit what we do here in, in real life and in practice. So there's not, this is not a, a, a demo, a, a real life demo, but uh, at least I can show you, we, I'm, I'm really in the uh, prototyping space that we have here at SAT. I really wish to change the camera, but apparently I'm not sure if I can do this. Oh, I can, that's great. I can just move to the other camera and I'm working here with my colleague uh, that's in the corner, written, hidden right there, right there uh, Shal. And I can move the camera here so you can see the haptic floor. 
it will not move because we are pretty much running another project in the corner over there. And this is the audio dice as is. So this is the prototype that's not fully open source, but that bad boy over there, that's the uh, open source, fully open source version. Uh, it's available on our uh, GitLab. We have a GitLab repository, Satmoel, with, uh, with all the, the information about pretty much all, uh, all the software that we are in hardware that we develop here. Uh, again, it's I'm really, really happy to, to present this, uh, being part of the open source community. This is a value that we have here very strongly to share as much as we can and support our hard, open hardware and open software, open, uh, open development in general. Uh, to the to the community and mostly the artistic community that I we feel it's under underrepresented even in the open uh, environment. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, if people want to be involved or want to get access to any of this equipment or learn a bit more, uh, how can they get in contact with you? Oh, that's great. So uh, I would just share again the contact so can uh, really send me an email directly but uh if if you are here in montreal just pay us a visit uh, we are we are uh we are a public space a uh, public uh research center and uh the, the idea is really to support artists and um do projects residencies so if you are if if uh you are an artist that works with open source and that wants to explore our tools, uh, really send us a message. We'll do our best uh, to well, to receive you. Uh, we do have residency programs here for artists, uh, for multimedia artists, pretty much. Uh, we have to check on the website that unfortunately I didn't put there, but it's very easy to, to, to get. It's just uh, www.sat.qc.ca, so the last part of my email. And uh, and uh, all the information about SAT is there. Amazing. And we'll make sure we've already put most of those links. We'll make sure we get them all in your email uh, contact in the chat. And uh, yeah. I, I've seen the haptic floor and I've experienced it. I love it. It's, it's really amazing. All the work that you folks do, the dome, all the art, everything. It's really great. So um, if anyone is watching from Montreal, I really highly recommend uh, getting in touch with the folks at SAT. So thank you so, so much. Thank you.